Oscar Wilde once said, a veces, pode, a veces podemos pasar los años sin vivir en lo absoluto. Y de pronto, todo se concentra en un solo instante. Oftentimes, we can spend years without living in the absolute. And suddenly, everything comes together in a single moment. And tonight, that's exactly how I feel, a single moment. That for many of us, will stay with us. Which reminds me of a French saying, que dice, the essence of life is about a moment, it's about a place, it's about an event, a situation, a circumstance. Again, a moment. Creating memory and the mind and, it, and the heart. Vivid memory that will stay for us, with us, for the rest of our lives. As the heart has memory more than the mind, for the treasures of life will stay with us forever. And tonight, I feel that it's one of the, one of the most beautiful moments. I've been in higher education for over 30 years. I've moved 17 times in my life. I have taught in seven different universities in four different states. And today, I have the honor to be with you, sharing this place with people that I've known for years, some of them for months or days, but have shown to me a vested interest in social justice, positive transformation, equality, respect, and human dignity, and not the hypocrisy of politics, misunderstanding, twisted lies, Oftentimes, outright lies conveyed by the media, television, and sometimes politicians. So tonight, in talking to some of you, it's about a night of understanding. Understanding each other. How can I try to understand others without understanding myself? Sometimes finding myself, acknowledging my own mistakes, in search of the truth, of reality. Along the way, understanding that we have reached different realities, different truth. His truth is most likely different than her truth, as well as his truth very different than his truth, different realities to acknowledge, acknowledge those differences in reality and truth. Empowerment. Along the way, asking ourselves, what are we doing here? Why are we here? For most of us, hopefully, it's not a political event, but actually changing lives. Quite often I ask myself, do I still make a difference? Because the day that I no longer make a difference is the time for me to retire and go do something else. It's not about a paycheck. Two decades ago I stopped working for a paycheck when I realized the essence of life. As I started my quest, my search, my journey for immortality. What am I looking for? A legacy. Or someone else. But what am I leaving? What am I looking for? A legacy. Youngest scholars here, what are you looking for? Beyond the truth. An education. Knowledge. Discovery. What are you looking for? Along the way, be thinking, be asking ourselves, what are we looking for? Beyond the car, the car will come. Beyond the house, the house will come. I came to this country, by the way, as an undocumented person. 
I was an illegal person, as they call them, illegal. No human being is illegal. Undocumented people. A little respect. I was actually detained by the Border Patrol a few times and sent back. So I have swam in the rivers. I had the great fortune of going to college. Even after my counselor told me that the best thing that would happen to me would be to go do Mexican work or join the military. Another person said, you gotta move on, go get a college degree. I went to a community college, like all of you here. And guess what? I went to Sol Ross, like all of you here. I was about to graduate from Sol Ross State University in Alpine. I didn't know what I was, I was not sure what was to become of me. They offered me a job with DPS to go push a patrol car. I was not convinced that I wanted to push a patrol car for, the, for a career. So I went to Dr. Ortego for his advice. Dr. Ortego advised me, what should I do? He grew a piece of paper and threw it in front of me. What do you want to be? He drew a line, fill in the blank, go do it. First of all, I began by going on to graduate school at a major university. So I went to New Mexico State University for my master's. When I was there, I met another professor who said, you gotta go on to get a doctorate. By now, you gotta leave here, leave the area. So I went to Western Michigan University to get a PhD. At that time, the average time to get a PhD was six to seven years. I finished in two and a half years. I was in my mid-20s when I had a PhD. And I graduated from Soros. University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee was about to hire one of the youngest professors they had ever hired. And the university was concerned about my age and my intellect. So they called my major professor. Two questions. Does Martin has the emotional and psychological ability to, to, to sustain the rigors of this university, a published or perished university? My major professor said yes over the phone. And then came the big question. Does Dr. Rina has the intellect to sustain the rigors of this university? And she responded with this line, Martin is on his way to become one of America's most prolific writers. And today, I have what, 12 books, over 80 publications, and I graduated from Soros. Back home, I never slept above the ground. I actually slept on the floor in natural dirt. And I used to go around collecting Cokes. After a person drinks a Coke, they leave about this much in the bottom and I will pour them into a single Coke to take a drink. Savage poverty. Before I came to this country. And in the United States, a few more years of savage poverty. As I continue my journey in life, my first job in the United States was sweeping for a construction company. And along the way, I did multiple jobs, washing cars in a garage, mowing lawns, paintings, until I had my first gig as an engineer with Union Pacific. And along the way, at one time I used to walk everywhere. I had no car. Eventually, and all the one car came, along the way, multiple cars came. I don't even drive. One property, another property, another property, another property. But along the way is, what do I looking for? Because hopefully life is bigger than a car. Then a house, there will come, and then what? What are you looking for? And for me, it's about changing lives. 
And as I often mention in class, a class that in some way does not change life has no value. In the same way, when I deliver a lecture, a lecture that does not change life in one way or the other has no value. It's time for me to stop lecturing. To provoke, whether it is in my classroom, downtown, in John Gonzalez courtroom, or at an Ivy League university like UCLA, where I deliver lectures, and the UCLA School of Law, my lectures have to be powerful, sometimes even more, depending on the audience. And I don't hold back. The truth. And talking about the truth, I'd like to acknowledge some people who have been part of this journey. And I'd like to begin, by the way, by Dr. Wynn, our chair. Since he became chair and prior to that, he has been vested in making changes for the betterment, not only of our students, but our communities. And making this kind of event come together for the first time since I've been here, we have all, the, of our, all of our administrators here. For me, it's an honor. He's here. Engaging. Dr. Nikosha, our dean, is also here. A person who has worked closely with us. For the better, not for the betterment, for the better, not only of our students, faculty, as staff, and the community who is sensitive to some of these issues. Dr. Garza, who is here for Dr. Garza, that I miss you. Dr. Garza, our VP, who is also here today, acknowledging the significance of this event, supporting us in this journey about positive transformation, change the next generation. It's not about me. It's not about Dr. Nekosha, Dr. Wynn. It's about the next generation of justice, equality, respect, and human dignity. And we will not be here today for a man that I've known for several years, a man that I have grown, and I'm cautious about the word, I have grown to respect and admire and love. Because of his legacy and the legacy of his parents to not only change within the community but try to be global. Policy at the local level, at the state level, and even at the national level. Who questions? Who, has, who is assertive whom he has to be? Not aggressive, assertive who is firm in his convictions, a man of respect, is man of, a man of honor, that I'm proud to say is a friend of mine. And we would not be here today if it was not for him, Judge Gonzalez, his court. And these people that I just mentioned, we might not like them, or we might not like her, but they deserve respect. I often tell people, not very many people like me. You can tell why. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if anybody, I'm not sure if anybody likes me. But guess what? Respect. Because I'm not looking for people to like me. I can care the less. It's about respect. And finally, moving to make the transition, the agents today in communication to Mr. Kirby. Kirby, did I pronounce it right? Mr. Kirby and his colleagues and agents, I was very pleased, very honored when I heard him spoke in my office. We had a meeting in my office. And after listening to him and his colleagues, I said, these are the group I want in the courthouse with Judge Gonzalez. These are the men and women that I want to hear. As they appear to be sincere, not coming up here to sell their agency or themselves or to sell the used vacuum cleaner. 
but actually make a difference. Reaching out, reaching out to you, the students, reaching out to us. How can we help? How can we bridge that gap? How can we balance it out? Otherwise, we would not be here. There's been times when we have this kind of forums. In the past, remember, I've been doing this for 30 years, and somebody will get up here, and they start going off, and guess what? I caught them off after three minutes. It's the end of the show. I won't hesitate. I won't hesitate. But I know that these people, agents, are vested in positive transformation. They reach out to us, and that's something to be admired, appreciated. So once again, thank you. I am honored. I'm looking forward to their presentations. As this moment will stay with us forever. And with that, I want to pass it on to Judge Gonzalez to introduce our first guest speaker. Judge Gonzalez.